<laughs> it's in the men's room. Somebody wrote my name on the bathroom door, but you didn't put my phone number. What the fuck? How am I going to hook up if you don't put my phone number? Holy shit. Okay. Hey! Hey! Oh, fuck off. Try that again. Hey! Yeah, see, now we're, we just fucked all these people in the other room. They're like, holy shit, what are we doing in this room? They're fucking partying in the other room. Look at it. They're all coming in. They're like, yeah!
And so I was like, oh my God, like, this is so weird. That's, that's not my answer. So uh, I asked a bunch of kids, and uh, if, if, if you're following me on Twitter and if you have kids, I asked you to ask your kids this question. And I got about 100 responses back. And out of those 100, uh, only four kids said that the opposite of work was play. Uh, most of them said lazy, uh, some of them said home, some said relaxed, uh, boring, I <laughs> love that one, <laughs> right? You're not working, not fucking doing anything. <laughs> Fuck, that's boring. Uh, so uh, I love that. Um, hard? And I was like, hard? <laughs> Why the fuck is the opposite of work hard? And, I don't know. Uh, if they were under seven, the answer was not work. Very zen. I like that. Very zen. Uh, um, I like home, right? Home is pretty good. Fuck it, if you're not working, you must be home. Uh, fucking genius. Um, and so, this made me think a lot because um, I, I don't see the difference, uh, you know, for me. For me, work and play are kind of the same thing. Um, you know, I, I, I play for a living and that, and that play turns into work. It, work is play. They're not antonyms. They're not opposites of each other. They're actually the same thing. And uh, if you're not playing, your job must suck. Um, so we've got to bring more play. Uh, into our work. Now, let's talk about some people. Let's talk about this fucking guy. Uh, Mark Tila. Uh, Mark is a great guy, lives in Cologne, Germany, runs this conference called Beyond Play. And um, what's interesting is, is that he used to run this other conference. And he's just recently changed his conference to Beyond Play. And this made me start to think about some shit, right? And it made me think about this. Uh, Flash Forum Conference, which used to be uh, Mark Tila's thing, is now called Beyond uh, Teleron. FITC in Canada uh, is, used to be called Flash in the Can. We had this conference called Flash on the Beach, now it's called Reasons to be Creative. We used to have this conference called Flash Belt, now it's called IO. Off used to be Online Flash Film Festival. Huh? Holy shit! Flash is dead, just in case you had any doubts. Okay. And so this made me think about some stuff. Like, you know, words can be funny things. Like, we had this word flash for like a really long time. And what flash meant was that you were experimenting and doing creative play. That you were trying things, right? But, but you can't keep doing that. Like with time, new technologies emerge. We have things like processing, we have like open frameworks, we've got Cinder, we've got WebGL, we've got HTML5. We've got all these great things that are happening right now. Now, fuck you, okay? Because I just want to say that actually uh, HTML has been trying really fucking hard for a really long time, right? It used to be called HTML and it was called the HTML, it was called XHTML, it was Web 2.0 and then HTML5 and that one fucking stuck. <laughs> but let's not fuck around. The truth of the matter is, we're talking about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. <laughs> Has anyone told you to fuck? Huh? I love you too. My phone number will be in the bathroom. <laughs> Flash or HTML5 or, or processor or any of those other stuff, our industry is hungry to sort of foster more of this creative play. And a lot of that sort of died with the Flash community. So where was I? Uh, Mark. Mark lives in Cologne. And uh, in Cologne, there's this really fucking great building called the Dome Cloister, which I lovingly call Evil Cathedral. Which is, it's just fucking evil. Uh, and Right? So I, I need to, I'm going to play. So I fucking go into the cathedral and, right? And they've got these like really crazy stained glass windows. And I look at this stuff and I'm, and I'm 
constantly thinking about creative play, how to engage in creative play. And with this, you know, I, I'm always open to inspiration. And I'm thinking, you know, like, how can I use this to my advantage? So this is uh, some film. It's, uh, it's used by silk screeners, and they, they print on black, and that's how they pull their, their silk screens. And uh, I just ended up printing on it, and only to find out that it actually takes color really, 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 really well. And uh, experimenting, playing, there's, there's no client here. This is just trying to expand my creative sandbox. And what's cool is, is that during the day, the light floods in and you can see it, it, it pulls the, the, uh, the color onto the floor. And just the opposite, if it's nighttime, it actually lights uh, the outside. So constantly engaged in this, in this creative play to, to try to do new things with my work. Now, in this evil cathedral, they've got these fucked up floors. Uh, and so, you know, you can't, if you're watching me draw out here, right, and then you look at this slide, you're like, holy shit, he's fucking run, ripping off evil cathedral floor. Yes. Uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, right? Looking at that kind of reflection thing and going like, dude, I could fucking totally write a program that steals that. Um, and so, I'm looking at these sort of forms and structures that I see uh, in life to try to uh, bring into my work. And again, this is all just creative play. All creative play to try to figure out what the, what the fuck I'm doing. Um, they have these like great floors. I really love the, the, the floor inside this whole cathedral. It's like really beautiful. So anyway, I'm in the cathedral and I'm slated to go home and then this fucking shit happens. Uh, and I, pff, I got trapped. I got trapped in Germany. I was in, hey, hey. <laughs> Whoa, that was really close. Uh, so I'm trapped in Germany with this, 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 this volcano. And I'm at Mark's house. Mark is like, yo, man, come live with me. And I'm like, cool, I'll come live, live with you. And I go, I'm at Mark's house, and for some reason, we have to go into his basement. So he's like, yeah, man, you know, come, come, in, let's go down in the basement. And I was like, sweet, cool. And I walk downstairs, and I'm like, boom! I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> inspiration coming to me when I'm not ready for it. And it ends up that I do this whole like series of, uh, uh, of work based on <laughs> Mark's basement. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm making all these things, making all these things, right? I'm fucking around. And then Hector calls me. And Hector's like, hey man, uh, it's our 10 year, uh, it's our 10, uh, our 10 year anniversary. Do you want to design the cover for the book? And I'm like, holy shit, I've got this basement to show you. Uh, and it ends up becoming the uh, Aim High, Keep Moving uh, book, all based on Mark's floor. Um, so what happens is, is that this, this creative play and this inspiration hunting ends up leading into work, right? But it starts as play, it's always play. And uh, this kind of play eventually finds itself in the client work. So this work, you know, j just by happenstance, uh, occurs by hitting Mark's floor. Now, while I really like this floor, no, switch back, not me. I can't even begin to tell you my love affair of carpets. <laughs> Holy shit. Now, I'm not sure what the job requirement is to have this, this job, designing hotel carpets but I'm pretty sure you have to be on acid. <laughs> right? Am I right? Like, imagine that job interview. Are you a designer? <laughs> yes. Are you on acid? Yes. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. You know what I love more than this carpet? is my fucking shoes. <laughs> my shoes. I fucking love my shoes. Look at my shoes. Do you know why I love these shoes? I'm gonna show you my shoes. Do you know why I fucking love these shoes? They don't stink, I swear. I'm, I just have love. I just have love for you. Do you know why I love these shoes? Because I got these when I was nine. 
And it's like, it's the thing. It's the thing that, that, that grounds me to the earth. The fucking nine-year-old. <laughs> See, the only reason why I like these shoes is because it reminds me. Okay. I'm a bit of a So I love these shoes because they remind me to be a kid, right? They're stupid. I had them when I was nine. Uh, and so they, they, they constantly remind me to be childlike now. I'm at fucking Mark's house, and Mark's looking at my shoes, and he's like, yo, you like Vans, huh? I'm like, yeah, I like Vans. He goes, oh yeah? Oh yeah? Yeah, me too. I'm like, really? Six pair? Six! You don't like to buy me. I don't fucking think so! <laughs> I have 22! <laughs> Clearly, winner Vans, yes! <laughs> Look at him, he's so sad. Look at his fucking face. He's so sad because I beat him. So you know what he does? He sends me this other email. He says, I am, I am. Look at, look at that hat. I went, oh. <laughs> really? We're going there? Really? Because I clearly have this battle won. Now, uh, I was a sponsored skateboarder. Maybe like uh, Pete, Pete was pro, I was an amateur, which meant Pete got paid, and I just got free shit. <laughs> which was kind of a cool deal. Uh, but I was an amateur road uh, all throughout the uh, uh, United States doing demos and stuff. And uh, I have a half pipe in my backyard. <laughs> um, I had a midlife crisis, and uh, I, I built a half pipe. Uh, and, and I'm 40. <laughs> And I walked into the wood shop, right? I walked into the place and I was like, hey! And the guy's like, hey. And I'm like, I am going to build a half pipe in my backyard. And he was like, awesome! And I was like, yes. Um, but I have a question. If I buy too much wood, like, can I bring the wood back if I, if I buy too much? He's like, no problem. I'm like, cool. So I'm, like, I'm building my ramp and uh, I go back. It ended up that I didn't have enough wood. So I went back into the place and I said, I don't have enough wood for my ramp. And he goes, oh, how's the ramp going for your kids? Oh, no, 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 it's for me. <laughs> ah. Uh, so, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't too thrilled. Now, you may be wondering, uh, who's the body uh, on, my, on my half pipe? Uh, Jerry came over, and Jerry does not know how to skateboard. And Jerry said, I want to try this. And I said, no. Uh, and Jerry said, no, I'm just going to do, you know, like that on the bottom. And uh, Jerry fell. And uh, he landed, he fell, he fell down. And he says, oh, I think I hurt my arm. And I went, fuck off, you didn't hurt your arm. I said, oh, I think I hurt my arm. And I'm like, fuck off, you didn't hurt your arm. He says, no, I didn't really hurt my arm. And he lifted up his thing, and a bone was sticking out of his elbow. So uh, that's fucking Jerry's elbow. So the lesson, is if you come over to my house and you fall somewhere else because I really want to fill up the ramp with bodies. Cool? <laughs> uh, so yeah, skateboarding. Uh, skateboarding is huge for me. Um, I still skateboard. I mean, you know, I'll always be a skateboarder. And if you're a skateboarder, you totally know what I'm talking about. It's a, it's a lifestyle. And, and, and for me, uh, graphic design isn't much different, you know? Like when I'm skateboarding, like I arrive at a place and I sort of, I'm looking at the obstacles, I have to overcome those obstacles, I have to figure out how to not kill myself in these obstacles, to try to find that perfect line, to try to find that, that, that beautiful moment. And for me, graphic design is the same way, right? It's trial and error, it's gonna try shit, I'm gonna fall, uh, so on and so forth. So skateboarding uh, is, is very much a part of my life and it's also a part of, of, of how I think about graphic design. Uh, now, uh, this is last year, uh, 39 years old, it's the highest air I've ever done, it's nine feet out of the bowl. Um, just falling sucks. <laughs> uh, I love that picture. Um, I showed this to uh, Mark's kids, uh, Mark has, has two kids, and, uh, and, and put it back, yeah, get the fuck off of me, no one wants this anymore. Um, Mark said, 
well, that's not very, uh, his kid said, that's not very impressive. He's just holding on to the tree. <laughs>
and we wrote these programs um, to actually rip silk screens. And uh, we uh, took these generated prints that we did, ripped them to silk screen, and then actually pulled uh, silk screens of these programs that we wrote. You know, and there's something really magical in, um, in in doing this, in using digital tools in these this analog process. I mean, you can see on the left, uh, one of the pieces uh, got too much ink, and uh, the guy looked at me when that happened. And he was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, man." And I'm like, "No, no, no, no. Random's cool. We, we love that." Um, too much black came through. So you get these things that wouldn't occur uh, in the computer. Now, I'm looking at this, and hopefully you're thinking what I'm thinking. Those are fucking skateboards. <laughs> so uh, I ended up taking those uh, and, and putting them into skateboards. And, um, and right now I'm in the process of actually hand drawing each of these. It's called the, the, the TIE 5. And um, uh, I'm using this randomly generated composition to inform how I actually draw it on the skateboard. So I'm actually looking uh, at it on screen and trying to grid out and redraw um, this exact composition on the skateboard. Much like I'm doing the same thing with the mural, using a randomly generated composition, but then free freehanding it so that the mistakes happen, right? And so this kind of work, you know, gets back into my love of skateboarding, right? Because I love skateboarding, so I want to make skateboards. So I said, well, okay, uh, then fucking make skateboards. <laughs> and that's what I did. So I've uh, ordered a bunch of blank boards, and uh, they come varnished, so I have to sand them. And I've been trying these tests on, uh, on paper, right? So this is me using digital tools, right, using a Waco tablet. I'm using uh, processing. Uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later. I'm using processing to randomly generate these compositions, and then trying to redraw what gets generated on paper uh, so that I get the accidents. And uh, with this uh, is a whole new set of tools, like this, this fucking thing. <laughs> Look at the bottom left. It's called Time Saver. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> My god, the circle is taking forever! I wish I had a time saver! My god, I love that! <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Right? So, I'm doing a series of skulls right now. And, uh, and these skulls, you know, again, it's like I'm using this sort of like random generation to sort of inform the pattern that happens on the inside, right? And this shit's bananas, like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do this. Uh, so I like this hybrid between uh, digital and, and, and analog technologies, right? And uh, I've, I've talked about this like a million times. Um, you know, my first computer was a Commodore 64, yeah? Anybody? Commodore 64? Yeah. It sucked! It sucked! It was like 1980-something, I was playing this game, A Bard's Tale, you had to type everything. You'd be like, you've reached a mountain pass, there was a rock, there was a sign. Pick up rock, you cannot pick up rock. Fuck rock, you cannot fuck rock. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You all typed fuck rock. I know you did. <laughs> right? So, taking these things, sanding these skateboards, and then, uh, again, doing this, this analog transfer, uh, looking at this, this, this uh, generated uh, piece with digital tools and then trying to reinterpret it on the skateboard. And it's just been, it's been thrilling because uh, it's, it has a whole other texture and, and, and feel to it that, that I'm really appreciating, uh, which is cool. Now, all of this is play, right? We haven't even talked about work, we haven't, we haven't talked about how I make money. Uh, but play, for me, has to start simple, right? So if you're going to start playing, keep it simple. Give yourself a project, make the rules of that project really, really simple. A really great movie for you to watch is Lars von Trier. It's a movie called The Five Obstructions. Anyone seen it? Yeah, it's fucking amazing! Right? The first obstruction, he, he, he's, a, he's got to like remake his film, and he says, uh, all right, I'm gonna give you these rules in order to make this film. The guy's like, okay, cool, what are the rules? He's like, where have you never been? He says, Cuba. He says, cool, we have to make the film in Cuba. And the guy's like, oh, all right. He starts walking away and he's like, oh, 
I'm not done. <laughs> the guy's like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah, you gotta film a sex scene. It's gotta like have this happen in it. It's got this thing. There's gotta be a dragon. There's gotta be, <laughs> and uh, no, no frame can be longer than 12 frames. What was it like? 12 frames per second, right? So the whole first film. <laughs> And you're like, fuck, this is amazing! <laughs> Bananas! The Five Obstructions, really great film. I recommend it for any artist. Um, it's, it's, it's how to uh, make things within boundaries, right? So play, I'm giving myself boundaries, I'm giving myself projects, and I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do with these things, but I'm making them. And sometimes things go wrong. Uh, and so this thing kind of went wrong, and I thought it was re really cool. But I, I totally fucked up my code, and I got these really weird things happening. And so sometimes failure produces these really beautiful accidents. Um, this thing happened. I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, but this thing happened, and I thought, oh, I wonder if, if this... This is using L systems. If you're a programmer, this is using Lindemeyer systems. It's a really great structure for, for making stuff. Really cool. And so this got generated. And I said, oh, I wonder if I could use that as a blueprint for a typeface, right? So you can see in the upper left-hand corner, I kind of used that thing and tried to figure out how many different ways could I make type within that structure, right? And so it's all play, it's all play for me. And uh, this leads me to this. Now, I just want to talk about this for a little second because this is, this is fucking awesome. I, I, I love doing this. SoundCloud, do you guys all use SoundCloud? Yeah? Okay, I fucking go on the SoundCloud and I like listen to music and it's like good stuff, like I listen to some really good stuff and so I listen to it, I listen to it and it ends up that I find this guy, this guy Bones. So I'm like listening to the thing, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then I looked at his logo and I was like, fuck, his logo sucks. So for about two days, I like, worked out a guy with a logo and I started generating like all these patterns and then just fucking emailed the guy. I said, hey, my name's Josh Davis. This is your new logo. Uh, <laughs> if you happen to do a record, this is the art. Please don't use blue. Uh, here's the colors that you can use. Please leave this space around the type. It's like a 16-year-old kid. He's like, okay, uh, I won't use blue. <laughs> listen to the music, fucking come up with a brand campaign for that person and then just send it to them. Um, because if you do that a lot, maybe one day the dude's gonna be famous. <laughs> and he will fucking pay you. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Creative play, you yeah? know? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Just making shit. And, uh, you know, again, a lot of this stuff that I make, I put into print, you know? So I, I do a lot of print with this creative play. You know, there's no client here, it's just Josh. Just Josh making shit. And you can buy that, I'll sell it to you. I'll sell you my play. Uh, now, I don't make a lot of money off this stuff. I actually make enough money just to buy paper and keep printing more posters. Uh, so don't think that, that's a good way to make money, but it's a, it's a way to keep engaging in creative play and get it out to the world, right? Now, uh, another thing that's really important with play is collaboration, uh, embracing collaboration. And I love collaborating with kids. Um, uh, kids are, are fucking magical. Um, here I was trying to teach uh, watercolors, and my fish is the one on the bottom, <laughs> the one that's like yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red. And the kid is on the right, like, we will do blue here, and then red, and then the water will be rainbow. Uh, it's just, uh, kids will really help you get out of your shit fast. Uh, I really love collaborating with children. Uh, really awesome, creative individuals. Um, this is Sarah Blake. Um, she's an illustrator that I really enjoy her work. Um, and with collaboration, like, I, try, I seek out people who are very different than me. 
Um, here she has done like all the sea life and she hand draws everything and then she scans it and colors it in Photoshop. Like she's not a programmer, doesn't have anything to do with what I do. And I end up taking these things and trying to come up with these hybrids. So like this is using uh, sine wave oscillations and I'm just sort of uh, twisting and stretching these, these, uh, these Bezier strings. Oh. And from that, you know, I come up with these really fun collaborations with people. And I, I love collaboration. And this is another guy that I really love collaborating with, Chuck Anderson. Chuck is, is amazing. Uh, the, you can see some of his artwork in the background. It's, like, really brilliant. And uh, I said, dude, we should collaborate. And he's like, yeah, totally. And then he fucking, like, gives me this. And I'm like, holy shit. I have no, what, what do I do with this? It's like, it's a mess. Um, <laughs> And I take this and I try to like pull out these parts and uh, we ended up like making these like totems uh, from his drawings. So this is just my programming and his, his artwork um, to try to see like, you know, what kind of things that we can come up with together. And interestingly enough, uh, this is where I got the idea for the skull. Look at that thing on the bottom. Doesn't that look like a skull? You see the eyes and the mouth is open. It's got horns. And so again, it's, it's being open to uh, accidental inspiration. And uh, that's where I totally got the idea to, um, um, uh, to do these skulls. Now, I have to tell a story about Chuck, okay? So listen up, this is really fucking important. No shit, this is, take notes. <laughs> when I heard Chuck speak for the first time, he was 19, he was 19 years old. And he was giving a talk in front of like a thousand people. And he was really fucking nervous, really nervous. And it ends up that Chuck gets up on stage, and he's got like a slide up. And Chuck's talking. He's talking. Just talking away, talking away. And it seems like he's talking for a really long time. Guy's got an hour. He's talking, he's talking, he's talking. He's never left the first slide. Finally, this person comes out and says, Chuck. He'd talk for 55 minutes straight, and he never left the first slide. <laughs> he says, I got five minutes? And I said, hey, my name is Chuck. 
I really like your magazine. <laughs> and this is what my work looks like, and I want to do artwork for your magazine. Send. Next email. ESPN Magazine. Hey! My name's Chuck. I really like your magazine. I want to do artwork for your magazine. I really like it. We should do work. And I said, holy shit, so you did that with all these magazines? And he said, yes. And I said, well, what if uh, the email address wasn't there? He says, oh, that was easy. I would look at the magazine and it would say, Joshua Davis. So I would do joshua.davis at magazine.com. And then it would come back to me. And then I would do j.davis at magazine.com. And I'd click send. And then it would come back to me. And then I would type joshua at magazine.com and I'd send it. And then it wouldn't come back. And then I knew that that was the email. Now here's where it gets fucked up. I said, how many people emailed you back? He said, 70%. I said, holy shit, I, I think I just peed a little. <laughs> I said, how much of that turned into work? And he said, almost all of it. At one time, I had nine. <laughs> Let's try that again. Say <laughs> Listen, Diablo 3 came out. I have not slept on <laughs> Fucking Diablo 3 comes out at 3 in the morning in New York. And if you... Who's playing Diablo 3? Yeah. At 3, 3 in the morning, join. No. Join. No. Join. No. Join. No. 3.45? Join. Success! And then I played for 12 hours. Level 18 wizard. <laughs> then I shut my computer, got in a cab, and flew here. <laughs> I really want to get home. <laughs> so almost all the people email him back. At one point in time, he had nine pieces of graphic design in nine different magazines in one month. What a fucking amazing, uh, uh, amazing tool. Play. Broadcasting to the world. Hi, I'm Chuck. This is what I do, right? And in a lot of senses, that's what I'm doing, right? I'm, I'm constantly broadcasting to the world the things that Josh likes, right? And I'm doing things like, oh, okay, and I'm figuring out how to color it, and you know, and I'm showing the world, I'm broadcasting the, to the world the types of things that I like making in hopes that people will hire me to do that as work, right? So, uh, of course, i got to give a shout out to Pete. He was my slave for today. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Um, again, you know, just broadcasting to the world uh, the types of shit that I like, right? And, and not only am I going to do this analog, I'm doing this digital. I'm making these things, and just like Chuck, I'm going, hey! My name is Josh, and I sort of like this shit that I'm making. Uh, and now here's the big secret. The type of work you make is the type of work you'll get hired to do, right? So uh, that means you have to edit your portfolio. It means that if there's shitty work in your portfolio, and you know there is, <laughs> take it out. Because what if some fucker hires you to do that? <laughs> right? Make the kind of work that you want to get hired to do. Now, when I do that, right, I'm broadcasting to the world, clients come. Like this fucking guy. <laughs> so this is my new boss. A fucking mouse. Uh, so this is Joel Zimmerman. Uh, he's dead mouse. And uh, his stage show is fucking bananas. Um, and so he uh, called me about, I don't know, about nine months ago. 
And we've been collaborating on his stage show and his posters, and I'm now doing animations across his head. And, and that's because I've broadcast to the world, hi, I'm Josh, and this is the type of work that I like to make. And so I get to sit at home and play. And I sit at home and I play with all these ideas. Um, Joel said he wanted to do something with gears. Um, so I started drawing these gears and writing programs. And so uh, for his European tour, his posters are going to look like this, which is the head split in half and, and uh, the inside uh, exposed with gears, right? And all this comes, these clients come, because I'm broadcasting to the world the type of work that I make. But that type of work is, is, is play, right? Now, uh, a few nerds, um, I'm using processing. I'm using processing with SVG, which means I'm drawing an illustrator, I'm outputting illustrator to SVG, and processing is, uh, handles really well um, uh, loading in SVG, SVG graphics and being able to generate them. Um, so this is what I do, I make these like little tiny patterns, and uh, this is all for Dead Mouse, this kind of new visual language uh, that we're doing for him for, um, uh, for 2012. Um, we just finished um, uh, a first product together. This comes out in June. Um, he's going to have a, a headphones, and my uh, artwork will be on the uh, on the headband. And again, all of this sparked from play. Play work, same fucking thing, right? Uh, some of you may have seen this stuff. Um, it's just some of the compositions uh, that I'm constantly making and and showing to Joel to see if uh, any of this interests him. Right. So we have these really great Skype chats. Um, uh, he lives in Toronto, and um, right now he just got back his new LED head. He's got this head that uh, you can see it there in the background. It's all um, uh, LED lights. And so I'm uh, programming these little things uh, in processing that actually play uh, across the surface of the head. So uh, you can see there's a still of the, of the head in the background, and at the top is just a sample of, of, of some of the processing outputs uh, that I'm outputting to, uh, uh, to his head. So uh, again, this is all uh, play turns into client work. Now, it just so happens that Joel also likes my personal artwork, right? So I'm always making this personal artwork, and when he has penthouse redone, um, he actually picked up one of my pieces, and, and this is in his living room. Um, so, uh, not only am I doing professional work for him, uh, I'm also decorating his home, which is uh, super, super cool, right? So, uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, uh, I, I was looking on the internet for a way to like reinforce this idea of work and play. And it ends up that I find this quote by Mark Twain that says, uh, Work and play are words used to describe the same thing under differing conditions. And fuck, if Mark Twain said it, I'm sold. So, right? That's me on a tractor. <laughs> Dude, you guys are, uh, are awesome. Please come by and visit me. I don't bite hard. Just soft. It's like a, it's like a love nibble. Uh, come by and visit me. Um, I'm so excited to see James Victoria next. He's a, a personal hero of mine. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Thanks.